Well, we're going to start another one. It's been a while since I've done a, a rosy T-Max video. Everything has been on the, the little uh, Ronda the Honda. And uh, I haven't had a chance to take her out on her new tires yet. But it was time for the, uh, well, it's 24,000 mile service on the T-Max. And it's actually got 25,000 miles on it. And I've already done the air filter and the oil filter and the oil change and then the silent change uh, oil change on that. Uh, so uh, there's plenty of uh, videos of me doing that, so I don't want to be redundant on that. But uh, let me uh, take the camera off. It, it was going to be, if you've watched me on uh, or seen my post, the last post I put on, on the MajestyUSA.com on the TMAX section about the valve adjust. I was, it's winter time now, as you can tell by the heavier coat. Uh, I was going to do a valve adjust or check. And I got to thinking, it's like, you know, it doesn't, manual says it's like 26.5, something like that. And I've still got 1,500 miles to go. And now that I've got the Honda, I don't know how much I'll be, you know, riding uh, Rosie. And, um, but I'm looking now at a, either a Moto Guzzi V7 or a, uh, a BMW uh, 9R or 9T. So I may not have to worry about it. But uh, I figure... As I said in the post on the, on the TMAX uh, forum, uh, I don't want to take everything off just to go in and find out that everything is pretty much okay or getting close. Uh, I mean, this is a ton of work. Uh, everything on the front for a normal um, um, uh, service has got to come off. And then all the stuff in the back, t fuel tank, everything. The radiator, you got to drain your radiator again. I just did that. Uh, drop out the radiator, you got to pull out the airbox, which I've never done, so I don't know what's entailed in that. And then you have to take out the, uh, I believe the injector bodies stay, no, I think they come out too. The throttle bodies come out, but the injector bodies stay. Just, I was just looking at it now with a flashlight, and, and you might be able to get uh, a bendable uh, hex uh, tool in there to pull out the, all of the, the uh, uh, studs bolts holding the cover on except for one right dead top middle uh, which I noticed there when I was doing the thermostat change so I that I don't want to go to all that trouble just to have something that's maybe just a little bit off uh, I will go ahead and wait you know cross my fingers nothing's wrong uh, I mean I just checked the belt and I changed it's 24,000 well 25,000 now I changed it at what 16 and it's still it's only it's what it's supposed to be 32 millimeters and i measured it out at 31.75 so it's hardly hardly worn at all in the nothing was it nine thousand miles yeah since you know i installed the damn thing so i'm hoping that maybe the valves are going to be the same way too i don't ride it hard i don't you know it's most of the time i'm plunking along at 40 50 miles an hour Every once in a while I'll get on the freeway, but I don't like them riding uh, on the freeway, so. Uh, let me show you one thing that I did, well, change, uh, doing this service, which pissed me off, so. Let me shut up and reset up closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Anyone that's ever done their own service on a T-Max will know that these bolts here, these goddamn things, this one's the one that I just came out on this 24,000 mile service. I had to drill it out and easy out it. And so I decided I'm not going to stick it back in. Underneath this cover here, there's three three that I took replaced before with um, who were they, 6 mil by 25 millimeter uh, hex head bolts. And so they're fine. They haven't been giving me any problems. So I was over at my local hardware store and I came up with this. This one takes a hex same as all the other ones that you take off to get the panels. And then I uh, pull the rubber. Is that showing off? Yeah. Pull the rubber, and then there's the uh, 6 millimeter by 25 millimeter long uh, button head bolt. And then to finish it off, to give some uh, support and to hold that rubber down, I use what they call a finishing watcher, which is kind of like a little flying saucer. It's uh, mainly made for, uh, like... Uh, Pan, not pan, yeah, pan head, no, not pan heads, uh, bevel head bolts and screws. It's got a little dim, in, 
recession or depression in here for the thing to fit flat. But the uh, the only ones that would I've, I could find were uh, the Phillips, but they were number three Phillips, but they were all steel. And I didn't want to put the steel in the aluminum, so I got these uh, stainless steel ones. And then I've got, you know, one tool for uh, doing everything now. So let me go ahead and put this guy back in and be done with that. And I got to put the battery back on recharge because we're going to jump over to do brakes on the other side on the back one. Well, I went ahead off camera to pull this thing off. Uh, there's a little bracket up in here that holds these hoses. Uh, it wouldn't want to. It, it didn't want to come off with them in place. So there are a couple of little case bolts that hold the uh, silent chain together, and there's a little bracket here with a couple. Uh, hooks on it that, that keep all of the uh, hoses and brake line and stuff and the emergency brake cables uh, in place and there's even a little bit of these are I think are the only screws I've come across on this on this thing yet that have got some kind of uh, anti-seize on them so we've got one bolt here that goes into the aft caliper and I need to spray it down, but it, the threads are on the end that goes into here. So this is just a sliding pin. And then these two other ones go, uh, they're the exact same. One goes down here and one goes in behind here. And then you can lift it up and there is the, the pads. Now I just gotta, I think I have to pull these clips on the ends, the spring clips, and then come out. Let me uh, go ahead and do that. And, a little bit of cleaning here at the same time just a little something that once you pull this pin out here then this whole thing slides right off so now you can pull out the uh, pads are right in here and then there's something I have to do with this thing to get it to go back in again so I'll read up on that and once you have the caliper off then these guys just slide right out and this one went way too long. <laughs> it's way too long on the back brake. I use the back brake more than I use the front ones. The front one's still got a lot of use on. The back brake is the one I use most of the time. So let me clean this up. And then I've got new little uh, spring clips to stick in here too. And then uh, some new pads. So I'm going to clean this all up. And while I've got the camera here, these guys just rotate out on both sides. There you go. You got the little clips. Well, I got that part cleaned up, so now I've got my new calipers. This is the part number. Can you see that? Yeah, there it is. We'll stick them in. And there's neither either side works, so you just got to get the uh, the gap in here. This is where the uh, brakes go. So stick the bottom in first. Get it in there. And then rotate them back into place. Getting the piston back in has always been a topic of comment on all kinds of forums on Yamahas. And they say you take pair of needle nose and you get down in here where you can see you've got these gaps and it's always supposed to, to uh, loosen this up but I'm going to put the fluid back in the uh, and how this is doing it I have no idea but you're supposed to keep twisting this until it's this surface is flush with the brake housing which it seems to going back in and I have no idea why it does that because these really can't turn because the brake pins fit in here but it's going in and I did spray some
It says use some silicone grease in there, so and that's silicone spray, so I'll probably be called out for that, but that's okay. That's going back in. Absolutely no idea why. Well, you can see it's in there flush, and the things are, they show in the book, these little notches here are supposed to be vertical for the uh, pins to go into. So let me go ahead and uh, figure out the next part of this and we'll come back. I think it's pretty much just set it in place and or I stick the, uh, the brake pad thing back in here like this. It's kind of f What's kind of funky is they got uh, stampings on both ends but they don't really mean anything because one way it goes one way and the other way it's pointing the other direction so it doesn't, doesn't seem to make much sense as long as there's only one way they can go in can't get them upside down so okay get in there push gotta leave some gap in there so the pads are almost at the ends of the uh, the little clips here which you can see right there. They're almost flush with these clips. Okay. Like I said, we'll get back to playing who's on first. See, I told you it was fun. Fun and games. There we go. Okay. I'll pull the brake shoes back so they'll get them over the, the rotor. Let me come do that. You know, you've been watching me cuss. Slipping it back on, you almost have to have like a little screwdriver or something to push the, uh, the uh, pads apart as you get it down over. But once it slips in place, and everything should be lined up and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these things back down. Cool. Well, I've always wondered about that twisting that thing, that cylinder in. I wonder, what the hell are they talking about there? Now I understand. Now I understand. So, let me go ahead and tighten these down and we'll come back. i got to get my uh, torque wrench out. Well, I've already got these down. They're 22 foot-pounds. And uh, I was kind of cussing Yamaha because this damn brake tube thing was in the way. But you don't need to take this bolt out. Uh, the, the service manual is kind of wrong. It says these two and then this one, but it's these two down here and this one that come out. So these are 22 pounds, or 40 pounds. Let me back that off a little bit. I hate doing anything right on the money. I'd rather work up to it. Be sure that the wrench, I haven't used this wrench in a while. Okay. And we'll stop there for a second. Okay, there we go, 40. Okay. You can get yourself in a lot of grief if you don't step it up. You think, okay, it's not there, it's not there, and next thing you know, bam, it's spinning in your hands. So, always take that as a warning. Slowly build up the torque. Also put a little bit of anti-seize on these two going back into this aluminum casing. Let me get the torque wrench out and we'll torque those down, but I can do that off camera. So that's the rear brake. And you'll see I've still got these, these damn things and they've already shown signs of wear. And there's two on the uh, clutch cover housing here too. On, well, actually on the oil tank, but that gets into the clutch. So I'll probably uh, replace those screws the next time with the other style. One last thing I did was I backed off and I went and got the measurement on this and backed it off because it was up at the lever. It was a little bit too hard. I probably adjusted this up um, and uh, 
I had to pump the, the brakes a couple times and then they're nice and firm now so that's ready to go.